Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. For today's first video, it's going to take us into the second week of November. Much more unsettled conditions on the way. So, if you've been waiting for the wet and windy side of autumn to show its hand, because it's been quite a quiet autumn, really, over the past a uh, couple of months. We have had periods of unsettled weather, but overall high pressure has been dominant through much of this autumn as it was through the summer. So you've been waiting for a bit of uh, wet and windy stuff to get going. It looks like things will be livening up a lot by the time you get through to the weekend. I think you're going to see heavy rain, gale force winds, and these conditions are likely to continue, certainly unsettled conditions likely to continue uh, through much of the first half of November. So I'll take you through everything that's going on there. Uh, very short. We'll start off with the tropical Atlantic. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 as well. So uh, I hope you find the video interesting and informative. Later on today, we'll have a look at the uh, Halloween and Bonfire Night period. The third uh, Halloween and Bonfire Night update will be with you uh, this evening. So we're going to start off in the tropical Atlantic. This is the latest in terms of uh, hurricane activity. We have now got a hurricane. So on Saturday, this was a tropical storm, but now it is Hurricane Oscar. Hurricane Oscar is a Category 1 uh, hurricane and it's giving sustained winds of 80 miles an hour. The track of Oscar from the National Hurricane Centre is this. So the current position of Category 1 Hurricane Oscar is just there. And the National Hurricane Centre are for, uh, forecasting it to move north, uh, northeast. Was in that sort of position. Next couple of days, it's likely to go up to a Category Two, so it is going to strengthen a little bit in the next couple of days. By Thursday, it's uh, somewhere around there as a uh, as a um, post hurricane uh, by that point. And then we get through to Friday and then Saturday, and going further north into the middle of the Northern Atlantic by then down to post-tropical storm status. We may well see impacts from Hurricane Oscar over the weekend. Uh, this storm is going to get caught up in the jet stream and it's going to move our way. It's just an area of low pressure, but i say things are going to be pretty unsettled over the weekend. So I'm not sure if we get it on Saturday or Sunday, the remains of this, but at some point over the weekend, I think we will have the remains of what is now Hurricane Oscar, giving quite a bit of wet and windy weather. This is what's happening in the stratosphere at the moment in the uh, North Pole at 10 HPA. So at the moment, we have got quite a cold uh, stratospheric temperature, actually. The grey line here shows where we've been with, or shows the trend for this time um, of the year. So we are in a cooling time of year till around uh, December, January. And then we start to lift the uh, stratospheric temperature up, of course, as we go into the end of winter and the start of the spring. The black line shows where we've been with this season uh, of temperature so far. And we are pretty cold now. We're under the grade line. We're colder than average. I've got really quite a cold stratospheric temperature indeed at 10 HPA, which is like the highest level of the atmosphere uh, in the stratosphere over the North Pole. I've got a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, still very high up, but it's a little bit lower down than 10 HPA. We see a very similar story again, colder than average uh, at the moment with the temperature at uh, at uh, 30 HPA in the stratosphere over the North Pole. Now, I've been showing you this chart in the winter updates. Uh, this is depicting the strength of the Zona Westies, both in terms of how the strength of Zona Westies are at the moment uh, at 10 HPA, so strength of the zonal flow, if you like, 10 HPA, um, both how it is at the moment and what the uh, forecast models are predicting for the strength of the zonal westerly. Something quite interesting uh, on today's update. This is from weatheristcool.com, by the way. You find the link to this on the links page. Um, so at the moment, we have got a very strong zonal flow, actually. You can see that just there. The blue line, again, is um, where we've been with the strength of the, uh, of the zonal winds through this season so far. So at the moment, we have got a strong um, zonal wind, Strong westerly zonal flow uh, over the North Pole at 10 HPA. Of course, that's associated with the cold temperatures that we have in the stratosphere. So the zonal winds will strengthen as the temperature in the stratosphere over the North Pole becomes colder. Now, these green lines are showing the uh, GFS ensemble forecast for the strength of the zonal winds. You notice from where we are now, there's quite a big reduction 
in the strength of the zone of wings being forecast as we get into November. So this is like November uh, just here. That's the start of November there. This is going to be December here. This will be January just here. That's as far as we can go with the forecast on this chart to the end of January. So um, coming back to November, uh, we find that uh, the GFS and its ensembles are forecasting the uh, zone of wings to reduce quite a lot, actually, from what is quite a strong um, zone of wind that we've got at the moment to uh, a much weaker zone of wind by the time you get through to the second week of uh, second week of November. So that could coincide with a reduction of the, uh, of the westerly flow. So although it looks like we're going to have very unsettled conditions starting up for the first week to 10 days of November, I'm not sure how long that's going to go on for. And it is possible as we get further in the, into the month, particularly around the middle and then into the second half of the month, we might start to see um, the westerly flow, the unsettled weather uh, reducing. We may even start to get high pressure building up within the northern latitudes a little bit. The other coloured lines are um, the four CFS runs. So we've got uh, one, two, three pink uh, lines and then a blue line. So these are um, the four individual CFS runs that are updated every day. And those are ones that take us through to the end of January. Quite interesting that we see with three out of four of those CFS runs as we get through into the second half of uh, November and the beginning of December, we see a real collapse with three out of four of those CFS runs, a real collapse in the strength of the zone of, the zone of flow. Those three CFS runs could well be picking up on a stratospheric warming, maybe a sun stratospheric warming taking place either at the end of November or into the early part of December. One of the CFS runs does stay quite strong with the uh, with the zonal wings stays around this part of the chart. Um, so one out of three stays quite strong with the zonal wings, but it, um, three out of the four are going for uh, really quite a quite a big reduction. Uh, in the zone of wings. And as I say, that could well be associated with some sort of warming of the stratosphere taking place through the course of uh, either late November or possibly into the uh, early part of December. That's early on in winter. You do expect the zone of wings to reduce in strength as you get later into winter. So kind of into January, particularly into February, that's when you'll tend to uh, reduce the zone of wings uh, and often that's a result of uh, mid-winter or late winter sudden stratospheric warming events. But for that to happen early in the winter is quite unusual. And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. I mean, if it's just one out of the four that was going uh, for a big reduction in the zonal wings uh, in early December, then it wouldn't be that that um that uh, impactful but as we've got three out of four that are all trending in the same direction we possibly do need to keep an eye on what the cfs is picking up on there it may be nothing but uh, it could be that something is going to happen in the stratosphere early on in this winter but certainly within the next couple of weeks anyway from the pretty strong zonal wind that we have at the moment over North Pole we are already seeing signs of reduction in the strength of the zonal winds within the uh, GFS and its ensemble. So interesting developments I think uh, for November it will make November very tricky to forecast to say the least. Right, sectoring temperature is continuing to reduce. So this is the very latest uh, with the CET from Hadley. We currently stand provisional to yesterday, 28th of October, at 11.5 degrees, uh, an anomaly now of just 0.7 of a degree above average. That will come down further. We're going to finish up underneath 11 degrees Celsius. I'm pretty sure about that. Probably somewhere around 10.7 10.8 will be our finishing number, which is very, very close to average. So both September and October's CT look like um, they will come in very, very close to average compared to 61 to 1990, but probably compared to 81 to 2010, a more modern and warmer average. Uh, we may be able to say that September and October combined might even be a little bit on the cooler than average side. And November is going to be pivotal for where this autumn finishes up. November will be the critical month with both September and October coming out close to average. It will depend where November finishes up 
in terms of whether this is a milder or possibly even a colder than average autumn. If you have a colder than average November, that will be enough to bring the autumn in colder than average as well. So very unexpectedly, after such a hot summer, it is not impossible that the autumn of 2018 might finish up colder than average. It really will be critical what happens in November. Uh, these are the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF here on the top and the GFS, which I've looked at in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibars, and about feet is area in the absolute high pressure and low pressure have been moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to high pressure, blue to low pressure. Look at what the um, ECM is showing, a very deep area of below average heights over and to the west of the UK. We're kind of like stuck in the middle of two ridges So um, with this trough. So we've got a big ridge to our east, and we've also got a big ridge out to the west and the northwest. But for us, we are... Within this trough, within the 500 millibar flow, the jet stream is going something like that. It looks very, very unsettled that there's lots of wet weather being driven in by that trough of low pressure. And the GFS is virtually identical. The only difference is that it's probably centering that trough over the top of the UK, as opposed to being a little bit to the west. But essentially, we do have that big mass of blue over the top of the UK, then we've got the two ridges that are on either side of that trough, one across east and northeastern parts of Europe, one over here in the northwestern part of the Atlantic. And so the flow of the jet again is doing something like that. There's a dip within the 500 millibar flow. So it's very unsettled. That trough of low pressure is throwing up bands of rain, bringing in lots of wet weather. And uh, not particularly warm either, because we are on the cool side of the jets there with both of those models. The um, jet is uh, dipping to the south of the UK within the 500 millibar flow. I think the GFS is the coolest of the solutions, but neither of them are particularly warm. And we see this on the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. Look at this. If you've been waiting for some rain, it certainly looks like it's on the way. Uh, this is the ensemble for uh, London. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off cold. We've still got the legacy of this cold weekend that we've just had. It's a slow old process to lift those temperatures up. So it's not really until we get to the second half of the week that we find the weather becoming a little bit milder. But perhaps not quite as mild. Uh, really for the end of the week and the coming weekend as we anticipate. We thought temperatures will probably get to mid-teen Celsius sometime around Friday. Not sure we're going to get that high now. So it looks overall as though the temperatures are no better than average uh, over the weekend. Warmer than where we are right now, milder than where we are right now, but no better than average. And then we uh, reduce the temperatures again as we go into the end of the first week and the second week of, uh, of November. So pretty cool temperatures coming up after a cold start. But the main thing, I think, with this chart is the precipitation spikes. Because although the next sort of two or three days don't have too much precipitation, from around Thursday onwards, those rainfall spikes are increasing dramatically and that does look like all of a sudden we're going into a very wet spell and bear in mind this is for the far southeast part of the country this is London so it's one of the driest places in the country and it does look very very wet here as we're going through the first week to 10 days of November so cool and wet is the forecast from the GFS and its ensemble no doubt partly driven by the strength of the zonal winds that we've got at the moment but remember we are forecasting or well, GFS is forecasting those zonal winds to weaken as we get through um, to the second week of November and so it takes a little while it's a little bit of a time lag but it could well be that this wet spell may be a bit of a blip and it could be by the time it's through to the middle of November we go into something quite a lot drier but also potentially colder too. Temperature anomalies, though, from the 29th of October to 6th of November are forecast to be uh, cooler than average, colder than average for the UK, for Ireland, for most parts of Western Europe too. Notice how warm it is uh, with those temperature anomalies over in the east and the southeast of Europe. Much, much warmer than average. Yeah, some places in the Balkans going up to like uh, 8 to 10 degrees above average from the Balkans over towards the Black Sea. So very warm, uh, much warmer than average in the southeast of Europe, but a lot cooler than average or cooler than average anyway 
in the west and the northwest. And it looks more unsettled as well. This is a precipitation anomaly from the 29th of October to the 6th of November. Um, wetter than average or average to wetter than average for much of the UK. Although Northern Scotland and Northern Ireland, interestingly, coming out a little bit drier than average still. Not sure what's accounting uh, for that, France also coming out uh, wetter than average, as is some parts of Spain and Portugal too. So that's how the GFS is looking for Thursday. This is the first day of November, of course. We've got an area of low pressure across England and Wales. That could bring some wet weather into the south late on Halloween and into the start of Thursday, the 1st of November. We will do your next Halloween and Bonfire Night update uh, this evening. That's Friday. We're trying to build a little bit of a transient ridge up, but this area of low pressure is uh, developing in the middle part of the Atlantic. That might contain the remains of Hurricane Connor, but actually I think the remains of Hurricane Connor likely to be around here uh, on Saturday. Uh, but in any case, it looks like it's turning very very unsettled at the end of the week. Uh, we've got wet and windy weather sweeping across the country there from uh, Friday to Saturday. This low pressure uh, just here could well be our next named storm at the end of the week. So watch out for that. And then this takes into a very unsettled weekend. This is Sunday. So we've got the parent uh, low, which is um, up here to the north of Scotland. But then we've got uh, the sort of off offspring troughs that are developing underneath it. And that could likely bring a very wet and windy spell on Sunday. So we have the main low pressure pushing wet and windy wind through Friday, Saturday. And then uh, more low pressure uh, revol revolving around that main low, moving in on Sunday, bringing more wet and windy conditions. Into the start of next week stays very unsettled, low pressure close to the northwest of Scotland, driving in showers, if not longer spells of rain. We're on the cool side of the jet stream as well. We saw that on the height of anomaly flow chart, the black line here, the jet stream. Uh, showing that the jet stream is to the south of the UK doing something like that. So cool and showery for the start of next week. And then we go up to day 10, and we just keep those areas of low pressure close to the country, bringing showers or longer spells of rain, quite chilly temperatures in with that as well. In the more extended range, we push out low pressure through, but we do remain on the cool side of the jet stream, and it remains generally unsettled, really. This, for example, Sunday the 11th of November will bring a very soggy uh, remembrance Sunday with low pressure heading in off the Atlantic, bring quite a lot of wet and uh, unsettled weather. And again, we're on the cool side of the jet Yet, so it would be pretty chilly. That's how we uh, go towards the end of a GFS run. We finish a GFS run looking unsettled still, but possibly just hinting at a bit of a weakening of those westerly uh, wings, maybe starting to show signs of building a little bit of high pressure. That's around when we'd expect the weakening of the zone of wings to start to uh, allow some high pressure to begin to build again sometime in the middle of November. That's how the ECMWF looks. That one uh, also unsettled as we get through to weekend. This is midnight Saturday. It looks quite stormy. We've got probably gale force winds across much of the country and heavy rain moving in from off the Atlantic as well. That's Sunday. So that first area of low pressure is crashing into Scandinavia. But we've got this next one that's heading our way. Could bring more wet weather in during the course of Sunday. Probably quite windy too. That's how things look at midnight on Monday. That low pressure uh, across Ireland. So again, very unsettled conditions over weekend and into the start of next week. In the more extended range, this low pressure is out to the west of Ireland, uh, still throwing in more rain bands. We've got high pressure building a little bit stronger than on the GFS to our east. Um, so quite mild with those southerly winds pushing up across the country. But again, the main thing is very unsettled. And then the GEM looking like this, all very, very similar. Lots of unsettled weather as we get through to the weekend. We've got this area of low pressure uh, pushing in across the country. And then we go through to sort of next week, just keeping things unsettled, low pressure, never far away. As we get to day 10, that's how we look. Again, very unsettled conditions, low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic, bringing showers or longer spells of rain. And again, quite cool too. We're on the cool side of the jet. The jet stream is uh, going to be down there somewhere. So all much of the muchness, very unsettled conditions setting up for the early part of November. Our 10-day accumulated precipitation forecast is from weatheroutlook.com. Yeah, you can find it to weatheroutlook on the links page. Is increasing all the time. So now most places are being forecast to get 
uh, above 20 millimetres of rain in the next 10 days. There is a swathe of quite wet weather here through parts of eastern England, the Midlands, down to southern England, where we've got kind of like 50 to 60 millimetres in some places. Northeast England doesn't look overly wet, nor does eastern parts of Scotland. But overall, I think these charts um, are increasingly uh, increasing the, uh, the rainfall totals over the first 10 days of November. Finally, the CFSV2 for the next month. These are the five hundred millimetre heights broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 29th of October to the 4th of November. Looks very unsettled. Below average heights through the country. That's low pressure through not just the UK, but much of Western Europe too. The jet stream is dipping through like that. So we're on the cool side of the jet and we're unsettled going to be really unsettled start to November. This is the 5th to the 11th of November. Again, above average heights over to the east, but the driver for us is the below average heights in the Atlantic, which again brings quite a lot of rain in from off the Atlantic Ocean. So the first two weeks definitely shaping up to be very unsettled. Bit of a change for week three. This is the 12th to the 18th of November. Signs of a bit more influence from high pressure, although this actually brings very mild conditions Conditions to the UK, um, high pressure strengthening to the south and east of the country, below pressure out towards the northwest. And so, flow of the jet is going something like that, dragging up warmer air or milder air from the central part of the Atlantic Ocean. And then we go through to week four. And this could all be associated with that reduction in the uh, strength of those zonal winds. This is the 19th to the 25th of November. You see the above average heights becoming more and more um, influential, building not only to the south uh, and the southeast of the country, but also starting to connect up to some above average heights to our northeast as well. So it's quite a big ridge starting to develop there uh, from the 19th, 25th November. If we looked at the temperature anomaly, which we haven't got time to do for this uh, video, if we looked at temperature anomaly, it would, sh it would still be showing us to be mild for that week, warmer than average. But the trough of low pressure is weakening around Greenland and Iceland. We're increasingly building this ridge from not only the south, but also to the east and the northeast of the country. And it is possible that that could be the start of some sort of blocking feature beginning to get going for the second half of uh, November. It could just be the first hints of the CFS picking up on that. Remember, the CFS is uh, three out of four of the CFS um, runs are picking up on a dramatic weakening of the zonal wings either late, uh, uh, sort of late November or into December. But we already have that um, modest weakening of the zonal wings that's coming up in the next couple of, couple of weeks if the GFS and its ensemble is correct. So we may well break out of this unsettled spell of weather around the middle of November possibly turning things colder but drier in the second half of the month. We should wait and see about that. But in the meantime, it's very unsettled. The first week to 10 days of November will be unleashing the Atlantic big time, if the models are correct. And particularly this coming weekend looks uh, very unsettled with prob probably gale force winds and heavy rain uh, as well. So, a lot to keep an eye on over the week, so keep checking back to the videos in the days ahead. We'll be keeping an eye on all of these developments, but at uh, 23 minutes, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.